Hi there. Welcome to a recent Final Vines video. And I need to explain why I was absent for about two weeks. Ah. Sorry about that. Um, I fucked up. <laughs> That's it. I fucked up. Um, a couple of weeks back, I received a new uh, modem. Um, my um, internet provider, they sent me a little note saying, like, you're going to get a, a new modem, free of charge. It's always good. <laughs> and I received it, and I, I still use this big-ass cable. Um, and it was a modem that could also be used as a wireless modem. So I was like, yay. Anyway, for uh, I think a week or two, I've used it as just a normal wired modem, and it, everything worked, everything was fine. And then suddenly I got the urge to see if I can get it connected to the wireless thing, whatever. Uh, before I did that, I kind of added the wireless part of the modem to my phone, my cell phone, so I had internet on my cell phone now, which I already had, but, you know, I had to pay for it, now it's wireless, so it's free. Um, so I did that first, and then I started work on my laptop, seeing if I could, you know, get it wireless and working, and I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't able to, I, I just fucked up. I changed so many things in all the settings that I basically also lost normal contact with my modem, so I could not get connected to the internet. Um, that took me a couple of days before I actually um, was able to send my laptop off to someone my parents know. He, he did it free of charge again. Um, and he checked out my computer and fixed it. And everything's working now. I've got a wireless, mo a wireless laptop, a wireless internet. So that's the reason why I haven't been online uploading videos. Um, I have been watching the videos on my little uh, phone and uh, I mean even though the image is small and it kind of sucks, I was still able to, to just catch up on all the videos you've done. Um, was able to respond to a few but I just, just it fucking sucked. So I didn't respond to a lot of uh, 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 videos. Anyway, that's it. That's the reason why. And um, now that I do have wireless internet, I just don't need to fuck around with the settings anymore. And in the future, I won't. Because I know jack shit about computers. I just know how to turn one on and how to upload videos. That's it. That's, basic, that's what I do. Anyway, I found um, a bunch of records. Um, cup, the first three are Goodwill finds, then a whole bunch of, of um, stuff I found in Amsterdam, and the last two are recent releases that I received in the mail. And for my Derek video, you need to watch the video I did before this one. So Anyway, uh, first off is a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, well, it's not. It's not really a piece of shit. It's just not that great. It's American English by Wax. Um, I used to like Bridge to Your Heart a lot, and I still do. It's kind of a good track, but I thought the rest of the album would be similar. It would be just as fun. But it's not. It's actually not, not good at all. It's got a naked woman on the cover, and maybe that's the only reason why I would keep it right now, but I don't know if that is a good reason. Um, yeah, this is uh, not that great. I have to say. Uh, it's going to be in my collection for now, but if I will go through my collection to see what will go, what will needs to go, this is one of the records that will definitely be discarded off. I just don't need this record. Um, this was a lot more fun. My first cult record. Um, this is Love. And it's a gatefold uh, UK release on Beggar's Banquet. slightly damaged, but uh, it's okay, it plays fine. The inner sleeve is, um, the glue came undone, so the record just falls out of the side. I need to re-glue that. Um, 
So if anyone has any idea how to, what kind of glue I need to use to, to glue up sleeves and inner sleeves, let me know. This, uh, this says she, she sells sanctuary, but my favorite being Brother Wolf, Sister Moon. This is pretty good. I, I, I don't know, but from memory, this band sounded a lot harder. This is, this is not hard. <laughs> This is very, very poppy, uh, but I like it. It's good stuff. This I found at a Goodwill, but I paid. Um, for Goodwill prices, this is expensive. I paid uh, about 11 euros for this um, at a Goodwill. You heard that right, 11 euros at a Goodwill. But if I would pay this, uh, or if I would buy this record in a normal store, a normal record store, it would set me back about 30 euros. So it's it's in as near mint a shape as it can be, and it's an it's a fucking amazing record. It's an original Dutch copy stereo of Scott Walker's Scott, his first album uh, on Philips, and it's in excellent shape. The cover, I mean, it's got a little dent in the corner, but it's just looks amazing and the sound quality of the vinyl is so good it, it does show its its age by having little cracks and little pops but it's that's it i mean that's just because it's been played and uh, it's it's over 40 years old i mean of course it's uh, it, it shows its age but this is just an amazing album um very uh, symphonic baroque baroque pop um, he does a, a couple of covers by uh, uh, Jacques Brel and Tim Harden I think he does a cover of uh, yes so it's just that, that vein you gotta think of it uh, in that vein and it's just beautiful I like this more than I do the Walker Brothers um, yeah, and, I mean, I love this cover. It's okay, it was 11 bucks, but it's worth it. So that's the Goodwill stuff. Uh, this is stuff I picked up in Amsterdam, which is all, you know, normally priced, maybe. Maybe a little uh, expensive at times. Um, at least one is expensive. But I needed it. First off, Tunes of Two Cities by The Residents. Uh, this there were two copies. One was more expensive. This was the cheaper one. But then again, the cover is um, I don't know why, but it's cut and there's damage here. But the vinyl is in excellent shape. Uh, it's the first pressing of this record on uh, Ralph Records, and this is just great music. This is the second part of the Mold trilogy. Uh, I love. Uh, the residents, but the thing is, you don't see it that often. Here in Holland, it's, it's pretty rare that you see residents records in record stores. Um, at record fairs, you tend to see them, but the prices there are a little higher. So, yeah, I just had to pick this up. Always try to pick up some residents when I see it. So that's an amazing record. This is the third. Uh, album by Bomb the Bass, which uh, I mean, this guy started out as a dance dance project with heavy hip hop influences. Then um, he had major hits on that one. Um, then the second album came, didn't do so well. I guess I don't know. I have it. I really like it. It's more a uh, hip hop influence. This is more uh, trip hop. Influence sounds very much like Massive Attack, Tricky, um, music in that vein. Um, the opening track, Buck Powder Dust. That's a mind-blowing track. I love that track. Um, it's inspired by Naked Lunch, uh, William S. Burroughs' Naked Lunch. It even features samples from the movie Naked Lunch, and it's it's a killer track. The rest is not as you know powerful as that, but it's a really good album. I liked it. It was pretty cheap, so I had to pick it up. So they uh, bombed the bass. 
This is the 2008 album by Indian Jewelry called Free Gold. Um, it's on Love Pump United, and this is very um, noisy, uh, new psychedelia. It's got some electronic bits in it, but it, it features heavy feedback and uh, shoegaze type elements that just make this a really good album. Um, I like the cover. And the music is, is just really good. It's better than their 2010 album, Total, which just drops the whole shoegaze thing, the, the, the noise, the feedback, it just disappears and it's become just standard, you know, psychedelic pop from 2010. Um, it's good, I like it, but I just love, you know, Free Gold more. Um, I do like the cover though. Anyway, this is a 12 inch by Sweet Exorcist. Um, I think you pronounce it as Test One, but I always pronounce it as Test Tone. I just love that more. <laughs> uh, this is the remix, uh, remixes 12 inch um, on Warp. It's early Warp. Uh, this is from 1990, uh, that third release. And this is Killer. Um, I would love to have a copy of the original. Um, Test one by Sweet Exorcist on on 12 inch uh, because it, it's one of my favorite tracks from that early um, uh, warp period, you know, like LFO and then maybe you guys know it, Tricky Disco. That oh man, that's a mind blowing bleepy house track. I don't know, but this is just really really good. And again, you know, it's on Warp. Warp is an amazing label. And like I said, this is hard to get. I mean, you don't see it that often. It was very cheap, actually. So, that's Sweet Exorcist. Then, um, the last, I mean, it was, a, yeah, it was um, Andreas's competition where he asked a couple of questions. And one of the questions was Music to Murder by. Well, someone showed a record, and I picked it up. Not because of that, but because uh, that person was really raving about it. Um, so this is uh, a nod, a thank you, a uh, tip of the hat to um, Henry, to the boy Alice. He showed this in his response. This is Gore with Mean Man's Dream. And uh, this is, wow, this is fucking amazing. Um, and yeah, River, it's metal. <laughs> I, I bought myself some metal. So there you go. It, it is metal, but this is from 1987, and it's way ahead of its time. Um, it's the original flap out sleeve. No, it's not. It needs to be glued. And so that's also why I ask, how do I glue this? What glue should I use? Anyway, um, this is way ahead of its time. It's instrumental, sludgy, doomy, awesome stuff. This is the metal I like. I don't really care for Judas Priest or Iron Maiden. You know, I like them as bands and when I hear a song by them I'm like yeah it's cool I might pick up um, Iron Maiden or Judas Priest uh, at Goodwills if I see them but you hardly ever see metal at Goodwill so I just had to pick this up um, it's the original Dutch release on Exact Records and uh, I need more by this band this is just this is literally mind-blowing. Uh, awesome, dark, depressive instrumental music. And I don't know why, but they put a lyric sheet in it. In both English and Dutch. Um, 
So I don't know if this is actually the lyric sheet, but it might just be a write-up on every track that they do. Anyway, amazing stuff. Uh, thank you, Henry, for um, bringing this to my attention. Otherwise, I would have just liked to cover it and go like, hey, that looks similar to uh, Brotherhood by New Order, sleeve-wise. And uh, what was the other one? TV Sky by Young Gods has a similar sleeve, metallic look. So anyway, thank you very much for um, bringing this to my attention. I also picked up Robert Fripp's uh, The League of Gentlemen. This is actually a project also called The League of Gentlemen. Um, and this is Robert Fripp doing the post-punk thing. It sounds very, very post-punky. It has the, um, the guitar sound of Robert Fripp that, well, if you know Robert Fripp, you know that guitar sound. So it has that and adds to it the, uh, I don't know, the, the post-punk vibe. Uh, it already starts on the cover. This cover is done by Daniel Dax. She's of the Lemon Kittens, a post-punk group from the UK around the same time. This is 1981 we're talking about. And this is just stunning. Um, I haven't listened to this like in depth, but what I've heard, it's really, really good. Um, another artist I will need to you know, get more of. It's on... Um, Brian Eno's label, E.G. Editions, or Edition, Edition, Editions, E.G. Uh, it's a Dutch release. Good stuff. This had been on my, um, uh, in, in my notebook, which is also my uh, wish list, uh, my unattainable wish list, because a lot of these records, original copies, go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But it's, it's a list that I compiled watching a lot of YouTube videos, not from the vinyl community. This was way before I, I did I was part of the vinyl community. Um, I think one guy called Suburban Batterson, he's not on YouTube anymore, sadly, because YouTube doesn't allow people to do put good music on YouTube. This guy did um, collage videos and put sound samples of certain amazing music on there. Um, a lot of obscure prog, a lot of world music, obscure stuff, and a lot of post-punk. And he did, he put up a little video of this. It's no longer available on YouTube because all his videos were uh, deleted. But this is XEX or Sex. Um, the album is called Group XEX. And this is a reissue from 2011. Um, on dark entries. This is minimal um, electronic uh, post-punk from New Jersey. Um, re originally released in 1980. This is awesome stuff. There's a little write-up inside that talks about it being avant-garde, electronica. Well, it's not really that avant-garde, but it fits in with the whole minimal post-punk electronic new wave thing that was going on at the time and that is just from that period my favorite of the whole electronic new wave slash post-punk sound this is really really good um, still available so if anyone has been looking for this get it now while it's still available um, like I said it's a release from last year a re-release from last year on dark entries um, they're uh, an American label, and this is just killer, killer stuff. Now, the most expensive record is the following one. This was 35 bucks, and uh, if I if I see it on Discogs, it goes for a little less, about 30 bucks. But shipping needs to be put uh, uh, with that, so it's going to be more expensive in the end. So I'm glad I picked it up. And that's the debut album by Nussmuck, Dutch post-punk legends, I, I should say. Um, uh, Johnny Boylan, 
uh, he got my second prize, which was their second album, uh, Four Clicks. And, um, well, this is their first one. And it's pretty fucking expensive and pretty fucking rare. Um, it's called Nasmak Plus Instruments, and the other side is called Instruments Plus Nasmak. Uh, I think you pronounce it as Nasmak. I, I have no idea. It's, it's not a Dutch word. It sounds Dutch, but it, it doesn't mean anything, at least. Um, it's an original copy on the Plurex label. This is the old school Plurex label. Um, and it comes with the original lyric inserts. Uh, the thing is, the the Plus Instruments part of this album is actually a band called Plus Instruments. It's Truus de Groot, who, if I'm not mistaken, went to New York after the release of this album and started a project called Plus Instruments. I don't know if it was her debut album that I saw in the same store, but there was an album where Lee Ronaldo was joining in. Uh, apparently the music she makes as a solo artist or as Plus Instruments is very suicide-like. Um, but that was fucking expensive. 65 bucks. So, uh, it's a little above my average, but this is killer stuff and I'm so glad I got this for my post-punk collection. So there you are. That's what I picked up in Amsterdam and I received a package in the mail from a label called Subroutine which is a really really good label. I like it. Um, focusing primarily on Dutch uh, independent music. Um, I received a 7 inch by a band called Bird on the Wire. It's a two-track uh, single EP called. Uh, well one side is called "Noise of a Quiet Man," which has, which they've got a video of online, which is a beautiful folky, uh, folky song. And on the back is "Le Petit Prince." Uh, I haven't listened to that side yet because I was too busy getting my internet fixed. Um, Derek received um, a 7 inch from Wufon. It's from the same label, but it doesn't sound the same. So, uh, yeah, they're actually pieces created for uh, museums. Um, and they're beautiful, folky, indie stuff. So, And the last one is a new album by a band called Space Siren. Um, uh, it's called Mr. Wagner, Please Give Us a Call, and it's female-fronted noise rock from Holland, and it's damn good. I think they're from Amsterdam, I could be wrong. Uh, it's a gatefold, it's a great release, I just love, uh, love it. Let's look at the labels. Um, great stuff comes with, if I can get it, it's, yep, with a download code, which they, I'm going to cover it up, which they put in this little poster thing. So the download code is underneath my uh, finger. But this is just cute, a little dress. Actually, the music, from what I've heard, again, I've not listened to this completely. You know, I've had so much to do, uh, but I wanted to get this out. It's noisy, uh, it's pretty damn good. Um, one track, there's a video of online again. <laughs> and that one is called, Oh My God, Someone Killed Kelly. So if you look up that, Oh My God, Someone Killed Kelly by Space Siren, you're going to hear a little sample of this band, which I, I really enjoy. So that's it. That's my update. Um, hope you guys liked it. And uh, just leave responses and uh, welcome back, Conrad. And yeah, the couch is still here. <laughs>